All right. Now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, functional programming, understand the hazards of using imperative code. All right. So functional programming is a good habit. It keeps our code easy to manage and saves us from sneaky bugs. But before we get there, let's look at an imperative approach to programming to highlight where we may have issues. So in English and many other languages, the imperative tense is used to give commands. Similarly, an imperative style in programming is one that gives the computer a set of statements to perform a task, all right? So often the statement change, pardon me, often the statements change the state of the program, like updating global variables. A classic example is writing a for loop that gives exact directions to iterate over the indices of an array. So that's how we've been doing it uh, before we started this uh, section, all right, or this course, whatever. So in contrast, functional programming is a form of declarative programming. Uh, we tell the computer what we want done by calling a method or function. So JavaScript offers many predefined methods that handle common tasks, so we don't need to write out how the computer should perform them. For example, instead of using the for loop mentioned above, we could call the map method, which handles the details of iterating over an array. And this helps avoid semantic errors like the off by one errors that were covered in the debugging section. All right. Uh, so let's consider this scenario. We are browsing the web in our browser and we want to track the tabs we have opened. So let's try to model this using some simple object oriented code. So a window object is made up of tabs and we usually have more than one window open. The titles of each open site in each window object is held in an array. And after working in the browser, opening new tabs, merging windows and closing tabs, uh, we want to print the tabs that are still open. Closed tabs are removed from the array and new tabs, for simplicity, get added to the end of it. All right. So the code editor shows an implementation of this functionality with functions for tab open, tab close, and join. So it's going to do all three of these things that we just said. Uh, the array tabs is, pardon me, the array tabs is part of the window object that stores the name of the open pages. All right. So now we're going to examine the code in the editor and we'll see that it's using a method that has side effects in the program causing incorrect behavior. The final list of behavior. <laughs> I thought this was American, bro. Anyway, the final list of open tabs stored in final tabs. The final list of open tabs stored in final tabs dot tabs. Okay, should be this array right here. But the list produced by the code is significantly, pardon me, is slightly different. So we're going to change windows, pardon me, window dot prototype dot tab close so that it removes the correct tab. All right. <laughs> That's a lot of reading. Anyway, so let's go over this thing. So tabs is an array of titles of each site open within the window. So it's talking about this uh, argument right here or the parameter, whatever. So we're going to have this const window, um, what do we call this? The uh, window constructor. And it's going to say uh, this dot tabs equals this right here. So this dot tabs is the, uh, what was it? Is the object or the key of the of the uh, property. And then tabs is this argument, which will be the um, value. So we keep a record of the array inside the object, all right? So when we join two windows into one window, uh, we're gonna do this. So we're gonna have a windows, window.prototype.join. We're gonna put this prototype on this window constructor. And it's gonna be a function with other window as the uh, parameter. And we're gonna say this.tab, so the uh, whatever the key is in the, uh, in the property, we're gonna say uh, this.tabs is now, now equals when we do the uh, join this.tabs all right, dot concat, and then other window dot tabs. So it's going to be <laughs> the value for the other window. So basically the array. So it's going to be the array that we already have concatenated with the array that we're concatenating it with. And then we're going to return 
this, which is going to be the whole thing concatenated, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, so when we open a new tab at the end, we're going to do windows.prototype.tab open, and we're going to have uh, the function and then the tab is going to be the parameter. And we're just going to do this.tabs uh, dot push new tab. I don't even think we need a parameter in this one. Uh, I'm going to do this and hopefully we'll remember if it doesn't work. Anyway, so we're going to push a new tab at the end of whichever the array the window is at the moment, right? So uh, when we close the tab, we're going to do uh, windows.prototype.tab close, and then we'll do uh, the function index. And so it's this whole thing right here. And so index is going to be the uh, index that we want to close. So if it's at like, uh, here's the arrays right here. Like if it's an index two, like this says right here, we want to close zero, one, two. We want to close work mail right here, right? So this is how we would do it. And this is also where the problem lies, all right? So it's gonna say const tabs before index equals this dot tabs dot splice zero to index. Well, this is, look, we have, I'm sure you've noticed we have never covered splice officially one time in this whole court, this whole thing we've done so far. So clearly splice is the problem, right? Uh, let's just come over here and look at splice before we get in any further into it. So let's go do the splice method, splice method in JavaScript, boom, all right? So we would have start and then delete count. But if it's the index, why would we want to delete two th things? We wouldn't. Clearly, it's something's up with that. And if we know free code camp, it's probably take the P out and it's the slice method, right? So let's, get, let's open up slice just in case we forgot. Slice method, JavaScript. And we'll remember it's the uh, method of array instances that returns a shallow copy of a portion of array into a new array object selected from start to end where end is not included. All right. So this looks like the zero to where the end is not included. Right. So we would want to take everything before the index. Right. And then we would want to put we would want to concatenate that before with that which after. Right. Which would be index plus one, so it would be skipping over the index, right, if we did another slice. So let's just change this up like that. And it will work, all right? So that's the, that's the thing that works. But you know what? We're not done. We are not done. We're trying to learn here. We're not trying to just go to the next one. If you are trying to go, go to the next one, you could have just came here and figured that one out, correct? Yes. Anyway, so this is going to take everything before, like, let's say it's uh, two. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, video window dot tab close. So here's video window, and then we're going to close two. So everything before two, zero, one, two. So everything before that, we want to put it in a new array. So this stuff, come on now. So this stuff right here, and then we want to concatenate everything after the new array. So everything after this too. So it would be Vine as well, right? And then we would do the this dot tabs, this tabs before index dot concat tabs after index. So this plus this minus this, right? Of course. And then we would return this, right? And so that's basically what's going on with this windows.prototype.tab close, all right? And so now let's uh, prove it by creating three browser windows. We've got the work window, which has this stuff right here, some work stuff. We've got social window, it's got some uh, social media. We've got video window, which has got some video players, video playing sites. All right, so now we're gonna perform the tab opening, closing, and other operations. So here we go, we've got const final tabs equals social window. So first we've got this one right here, and then we're doing dot tab open. So we're gonna do dot tab open, which is this one right here. So we're gonna have a new tab after that. So we're gonna have the social window, social window, yes, social window. So this stuff, and then tab open. So after medium, we'll have uh, new tab. So right, here's medium and here's new tab right here, right? So after that, we're doing dot join video window dot tab close two. So we already know that the tab close works. All right. So we're going to send in uh, video window dot tab close two. So this stuff minus Vimo, right? Or Vimeo. So we've got this, 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 and there's no Vimeo right there, right? And then we've got work window dot tab close one dot tab open. So we're going to close tab one. So Zero, 01 there's not going to be inbox and you see there's gmail workmail gmail workmail this is gone and then we're also doing a tab open 
which meet, which is the new tab right there. And so we already know it's going to work. Let's uh, re refresh this uh, so it'll uh, give us the, the correct one. So we already know it's, it's working. So it, it does the new tab here. It gets rid of whatever we said it was getting rid of, and then it throws another new tab at the end. And when we run the test, it works, and then we can just submit it. All right. So now we're on to avoid mutations and side effects using functional programming. And we'll see you next time.